sorry so uh, so the basic thing which you have to keep in mind is that when it, that whatever we are supposed to write we will write keeping in mind that the company is trying to minimize its cost reduce its cost right okay fine uh the company troll has been in business for more than 50 years right and owned by a same family there is a strong sense of tradition and loyalty to the family amongst the workforce the average time that an employee has worked for the firm is 15 years however this has led to static and bureaucratic culture for example the company's information system company's information systems are mainly paper based and uh, in line with this traditional business culture the organization is divided into set of functional departments including production warehouse distribution human resource and finance right so two main important things information is given in this question the first one is that the company that the people are loyal right probably people are hard working also but that is actually creating a problem because uh, things are quite static now right we are not innovating anything probably and the company is divided into multiple divisions so how this information is important we don't have any idea but the, let's keep this thing in our mind in order to achieve troll company's overall strategy now what was the overall strategy cost leadership right in order to achieve the overall strategy the ceo has decided that there needs to be reengineering uh reengineering of the process she decided that this project should begin with the company's distribution department uh once this has been completed the other departments will then similarly reengineered after one another so what they are doing um they are trying to reengineer the process right and she decided that this project should begin with the company's distribution department and then in case uh, possible we will further extend that as part of the bpr exercise a new information system uh, has been introduced in the distribution department to replace the existing paper based system so something should come in your mind that what can be the benefits what can be the drawbacks if we are moving from a paper to a uh, automated system or maybe uh, a new information system the new system allocates driver vans and routes to new artificial intelligence algorithm which claims to achieve significant efficiencies the system will also automatically checks outgoing goods dispatch notes against purchase order thereby removing the possibility of mistakes in delivering the wrong goods to the customer right so this is basically uh the benefit which the system will bring to the company right so this is the overall introduction of what the company is planning right so if we are doing uh if we are doing the business process reengineering that reengineering has to be connected with a cost leader cost leadership strategy that means our objective is to reduce cost and if it's not in reducing our cost that means this process is not going to work with the overall corporate strategy so that should be the final verdict okay fine let's move to the next part next part in the sense next okay so okay so this part says that uh the ceo has asked you as a performance management expert to complete sorry uh to complete the post implementation review of the bpr of the distribution department by performing a financial cost benefit analysis now this is basically a requirement that you have to do a cost benefit analysis so definitely there will be some cost definitely there will be some benefits and we are supposed to compare cost and benefits uh in order to get the net benefit most probably this should be it to assist you in this the project manager has supplied you with her notes on the process and cost within the distribution department under the old and new system which is in appendix number 1 right so let's see what we have in appendix number 1 right this is appendix number 1 so 
this is among one of the very few questions where examiner is asking examiner may ask you to do some calculations right so calculation is part part is definitely here right uh now this is what the structure is project manager notes the first point is starting with notes relating to the old system and notes relating to the new system right so let's read these uh these information and let's try to identify what we can do here right we will do it quickly and then i will tell you why i have chosen this part of the question to do in today's session right it has been identified that the two distribution staff spend all of their time creating efficient travel routes for deliveries and allocating drivers when right so two of the distribution staff is doing actually what is creating uh, is, is spending time to create efficient travel routes for deliveries and allocating drivers and vans how it is connected with the bpr process because in bpr process it it will it it will be done by ai system that will directly route the driver right it was noted that 4% of all delivered goods were queried by customers as they were not the goods that they ordered right one manager in the customer service department spent some times dealing with such problems right the annual budget of the cost of the distribution department is 2.1 million so annual budget is also given here average annual staff wage in the distribution department is 30000 annual wages are also given uh, and distribution department is 30000 the customer service manager spend customer service manager spend 4 days per week handling queries relating to wrongly delivered goods and the customer service manager annual wages are 42000 for 5 days per week right so this is basically the overall current system so what is the problem in the current system the current problem not exactly the problem the first thing which is important here is that uh, there is a person who is supposed to uh, con who is supposed to schedule everything uh, there is a person who is supposed to deal with the uh, wrongly delivered goods, probably. Uh, and then there is a annual cost of distribution department. Budget of the distribution department is given. Then there is an annual wage in the distribution department is around 30,000. So this is the general cost of the employees there. And the customer service manager. Now, who is the customer service manager? He is the customer service manager. Sorry. Um, okay, customer service managers spend around four days per week handling the queries, and this is the service. Uh, this is basically the cost of customer service manager, which is overall 42,000. So, this is basically what they are doing in the current system. Now, what we are expecting in the new system, uh, the hardware cost is around 50,000. Software cost will be around 185,000 and annual ongoing service cost is going to be 23,000. It is expected that the new hardware and software will last for five years and the cost of retraining scheduling staff in the duties is 1,000. Initial cost of training staff in the new system is 2,500 and annual budget ongoing training cost in the system is around 1,000. So you are supposed to make a cost benefit analysis in this case. Now, First of all, you have to think two to three areas, right? The first thing is that you have to identify that which cost will get affected in terms of increasing, in terms of cost saving, right? The second thing is that you have to identify which cost is a one-off cost, which cost is annual cost and which cost can be capitalized right because there are two to three types of costs generally whenever we start any 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 this type of thing right so i'm giving you two minutes to think uh two to three minutes to think uh regarding this question and just try to you know highlight the issues which you think 
points which you think can be saved, can increase, something related to cost benefit analysis, what you will do, right? And then we will discuss that. So just take two to three minutes to analyze this. All right, so what do you think about hardware cost? Hardware cost is 50,000, right? So obviously it's a new cost, it's a cost to the new system, right? Uh, so this is the cost part. But how much shall we include in this analysis? I mean, we are supposed to do an annual, what will be the annual saving or annual cost? You can apply different methods here also, but uh, right now we are doing just simple concept of uh, uh, per annum benefit, right? Hardware cost, shall we charge 50,000? It's uh, basically, it's a, it's a overall cost. So definitely that will be 10,000 because uh, this cost re relates to five years. So obviously this should be around uh, 50,000 divided by, uh, okay, sorry, it's 50,000. 50,000 divided by five, it should be around 10,000. Same goes with the software cost. So if you are charging the annual cost, if you are charging the 100% cost in this situation, that will not be acceptable, right? So you have multiple options. You can also do uh, NPV method if you want to do the NPV method. But the problem with NPV method is that we don't have cost of capital in this case. So in that case, you have to assume something, right? So, and software cost, I'm just doing it one by one, right? Software cost is 185,000. That will also be divided with five in order to get per annum cost. 
And what about the annual service cost? Annual ongoing service cost, which is 23,000. Are we also supposed to divide it by 23,000? By, 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 by five? Uh, it will remain 23,000 because it's an annual cost. So examiner actually got some different opinion. Examiner uh, said that the students uh, couldn't identify which figure they are supposed to divide with five and which figure is supposed to remain same. Now, what about uh, the retraining cost? Cost of retraining scheduling staff in new duties and initial cost of training staff in the use of new system. How you will treat this 3,500? What do you think? How can we treat this 3,500? 1,000 and 2,500. Shall we divide it with five? Or shall we charge the complete cost in this year? We have to divide it with five because uh, this is the cost of retraining scheduling uh, staff in the new duty. So it's a kind of one-off cost which the company will bear, right? So it's it will not be a good idea to charge complete 1000 in this year because this cost relate to the five year. The benefit will come to five years. So that will be 1000 divided by five. And this will be around initial training cost is 2500 divided by five. And that will be around 500. Training cost, uh, the last 13 training costs, since this is an ongoing training cost, annual training cost, we will keep it 1000, right? Now, why I kept question mark here? Because these are the cost, right, uh, which will incur. Now, what about the saving? Because saving will be from the older system, right? So now we have to identify that what will be the saving. I'm not going for totaling part because that is something which you guys can do because you are supposed to do it on Excel. Um, so the what can be the saving? Can you identify what will be the saving in this case? There are two costs which are given in the first part. 30000 is the annual staff wage cost and $42,000 is the customer service cost. And there is no other cost given in this question, right, in the first part. So that means that uh, savings will relate to any of these two or both of these or something like that. So what will be the saving? Uh, two of the distribution, yes, you are right. Two of the, sorry, uh, two of the distribution uh, staff spend their time on creating efficient travel routes. So definitely, because this will be done by AI, so you will save that money, right? So saving in distribution, no, saving in staff wages. And that will be uh, 2 times 30,000 because we are calculating annualized thing, right? And customer service manager. Now, there is a, there can be some dispute in customer service manager because the question says that customer service manager's annual salary is 42,000 for a five days week. The customer service manager spend four days. Yeah. Customer service manager spend four days per week handling queries relating to wrongly delivered goods, right? So since we are assuming that this is a this is not going to be the case in uh in in next in the in the new system. So there will be saving, right? So technically the saving will be around uh because he is working five days and four days can be saved. So 42,000 divided by five times four, that would be around 33,600, right? But if you want, if someone wants to challenge this assumption, because I think you can write the assumption whenever you are discussing afterwards. So the point here is that what, I mean, I mean, four days will be saved. So will you be able to save the salary? Because saving salary, it's not a variable cost, right? It's probably the fixed cost. So that is a question mark in this question, right? 
so what assumption can we take is that this manager will do some other work where he can where we will not need some new worker so probably we will save that money but if someone says that if a student is saying that no the saving cannot be made because this is uh, if the company is keeping the manager and the company is paying them full salary so with respect to decision making it's not going to be a relevant cause so if you want to ignore that you have to write a proper justification for that but right now we are assuming that someone else somewhere else this manager we can we can utilize this manager so we can save the money so that will be overall net benefit or the cost net benefit or cost right now whatever the benefit i th i think there was some benefit here i think it was around uh, because i have written the suggested answer so let me try to i mean instead of doing 21900 yes mm, so it's 21900 okay. now what is important here majority of the students what majority of the students do is they generally stop here because they are done with cost benefit analysis right um if you see the requirement if you come to the requirement uh it's here requirement is that ceo has asked as a performance management expert to complete the post implementation review of vpr post implementation review of vpr of the distribution department by performing a financial benefit financial cost benefit analysis right so you are actually giving a report you are actually handling handing uh, handing a report to the ceo right so technically you have to discuss something with with relation to this part uh, like net benefit of 21900 is a net benefit so uh, is this enough for the for the company uh, is this a good benefit not a good be i mean i mean is this a material benefit is this a significant benefit not a significant benefit what other areas the company can think like the assumption which i said that you have to justify the assumption that look we have calculated this figure but the last customer service manager you have to you know analyze whether the saving is saving will be made or not because if you are keeping the manager at the same salary uh, how much saving can be done in that case so you have to write something if you are not writing anything and if you are just leaving this question as it is because you think that you did everything yes you will get few marks you will get most of the marks probably but uh, i think you should write at least two to three marks as a post calculation review type of thing that what else you think that can be written here right what else in the sense that if you want to uh, if you are sharing this report with the CEO, what else would you like to tell the CEO regarding this benefit? Okay, so you have to think regarding it. That what else I can write? Um, see this two point one million benefit. Uh, since two point one million uh district annual cost, we haven't utilized anywhere. Can we use this 2.1 million benefit, uh, 2.1 million cost in this analysis? Number one. Number two, the assumptions which we are making, because this assumption is quite important uh, regarding this customer service manager. The third thing which you can explain is uh, what can be the other benefit which are not uh, listed here, but which company can have, or what can be the costs, other costs which are not listed here. But the company may face such cost, right? So if you think that anything you would like to discuss with the CEO, you have to write it in post calculation part, right? That's basically something which generally is missing in this type of question that we just calculate the answer if it's if there's some sort of calculation is required and we don't comment on that. Remember my words that whenever Let's suppose the EVA calculation is there or any other sort of calculation is there. After doing all these calculations, you have to tell the reader, mainly the CEO, uh, any issue, any problem, any anything which you like to 
communicate, you should write it there. Right. So what two to three points we can write here uh, is that the first point which we can write here is that cost saving is 21,900 because the overall objective of the company is cost leadership, right? Strategy of cost leadership. So first of all, we can connect it with that. 21,900 divided by 21, 2.1 million. Saving will be 1.04%, right? 1.04% is not a material saving, right? So if it's not a significant saving, then that point you can criticize, right? That the saving is there, but the saving is not as much compared with, as such compared with 2.1 million budget. So, I mean, this can be considered as a running of error also. Okay, so this is the first part which you can consider. The second part is that you can consider the assumption of saving in customer service manager cost. Because if we are saying that, if let's suppose if, uh, if the saving is uh, not there, or let's suppose the saving is lesser uh, compared with 33,600, then the net benefit will further reduce. And ultimately, the overall benefit can be less than 1% even, right? So in that case, it will not be a good idea to, uh, financially, it will not be a good idea, right? But do you, but if someone say that right now this 1% saving is there, so shall we tell the CEO not to, uh, don't change the system from, uh, the current system to the proposed system just because of the reason that we are expected to have saving of just 1% per annum. There can be some other things as well, some non-financial side, right? Uh, let's try to revisit the question so that we can recall something if we can. This is the part of the question which is actually connected with this, right? What, what can be done with the new system? So new system is more accurate. And the new system is automatically uh, dispatching notes against purchase order, thereby removing the possibility of mistakes in delivering the wrong goods to the customer. So efficient, uh, the system is efficient, the system is more accurate, right? So we can write the non-financial benefit here also. Non-financial benefit in the sense, non financial benefit, non-financial benefit in the sense that there will be uh, more accuracy. More accuracy can lead to more higher customer satisfaction. Right. And since the company is operating in a, in a difficult market, this can, uh, this can improve future sales. Right, it will be more efficient system in terms of um, uh, group identification. So it can reduce, it may reduce the workload of uh, probably the drivers resulting in, you know, some sort of, uh, in some sort of, you know, uh, mm, motivation is not the motivation should not be the case. Employees will be relaxed in that case. So employee, uh, employee from the perspective, employee perspective, it can be a good idea because in that case, employee will be more relaxed because uh, the one who is closer to the destination is supposed to go and collect and deliver something like that. So, that's basically the important thing which you which you must do whenever you are uh, when whenever you are done with the calculation part. And if you see the examiner commenting, examiner uh, report, not report, uh, marking scheme, marking scheme suggests what? See, this is the marking scheme. 
calculation depreciation is of one mark ongoing is of one mark on uh, one of course is of one mark distribution customer service so one two three four five marks and six marks are there for the calculation and the requirement was of seven marks so if you do anything wrong here there are you can still earn up to three marks for suitable comments in the calculation set that what else you would like to identify or assumptions or anything anything like that so that's basically how you can cover the overall mark. So uh, marks were seven, but the available marks were around nine. So if you do any, if you do one mistake here, you can still recover from comment sign, right? So that's basically something which is extremely important here, right? So I just try to uh, do it, but we will we will look at these red marks later uh, when you will do its second part, right? So this is the cost benefit analysis. Now, the next requirement, now this requirement is quite interesting. And I really want to do this requirement in this question because uh, you may find it difficult in examination, right? The BPR is applied across, as BPR is applied across all, the CEO is, sorry, let me try to, I was just trying to switch off this grammarly recommendation. As BPR is applied across all, the CEO is worried that staff unrest may result. Uh, that staff unrest may result from these changes, right? For example, the distribution schedulers were uncomfortable with the changes in their role which uh, resulted from the new information system in the department. The schedulers were moved. The schedulers who were doing the scheduler, schedules were moved to duties such as checking drivers, logs, and reviewing maintenance checks on the vans. The CEO would like your assessment on how BPR process will change the culture and accounting information system at Tron. Now, this type of question are quite uh, can be a problematic question part in your exam because whatever you have to do, you have to think because as such, no major issue is given in this question, right? So the examiner is asking you your assessment on the how VPR will change the culture and accounting system inform accounting information system at all. So that's it. And this type of question required you to think, to bring something out of the question. Something, you know, one word may bring out a, a whole complete point, right? So let's move to the basic information which is given there. Let me try to switch it off if I can. So let's move to the first part, right? Uh, and let's try to copy and paste it here so that we can understand what we have to do. Now, what we have to do is we need to identify what cultural improvement or cultural problems the company can face and what accounting information system, what can be the change in accounting system, right? How much, much this requirement is for? Let me try to identify. This requirement is of... Yes, I see. This is it. Okay, I hope you guys can see the screen. So this requirement is actually of seven marks, right? Seven marks means seven marks means that we can say, okay, fine, maybe three marks for culture, three marks for accounting, maybe four marks for culture, three marks for accounting, maybe 
three marks for culture or four marks for accounting, but it will be around three to four marks for both. Probably, let's see what what is in uh what how much we can write. Okay, so now this is of seven marks. Three plus three plus one can be anywhere. So it's around seven months, right? Now I'm giving you two to three minutes to think that what, how much we can extract from this part of the question. Okay. Take two to three minutes and then you will discuss. Okay. Can we think of some points here? Because see, if the requirement is difficult like this, that we are, uh, we don't have, I mean, we have points, but it will be difficult to extract point from such information, right? So let's try to make our work easier, right? Try to identify some major issues, right? or what can be what can be changed in a good way or a bad way and technically if this is 3 3 and 1 so 3 marks from culture means that some three some three points we need to identify from culture and some three points we need to identify from accounting right accounting system so if you are not getting points for culture we can start from accounting system because that's easier for us Right. We just try to, we just want to be confident with this question. So let's do the easier part first, right? And then we can copy paste it. You know, it's it's up to us, right? So let's suppose that what can be improvement in accounting information system. This is the easier part. Right. I'm just writing the bullet points that what can be the bullet points which we can identify here and because we are not practicing the writing part we are just trying to you know, identify uh, what can we do in terms of uh, pointers here so can we identify quickly what accounting in what will be the improvement in accounting information system considering especially uh, this part no 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 mm, yeah this part This part and it was something related to paper, sort of something. Uh, yeah, this one.
So the first thing which is going to change is that there will be uh there will be automation in systems. Right. Automation in the system, you have to discuss what type of automation you are talking about. We are talking actually about outgoing goods dispatch nodes against. Dispatch against purchase order. So uh, this is something, some sort of automation, right? Uh, what else can be done? There will be... Uh, Real-time information, probably because we are dealing it with automatically. So real-time information will be available. Right? What else we can write? Can we connect something related to cost saving? There will be... Uh, okay, fine. Let's do it in this way that this uh, the there are multiple divisions right there are multiple divisions of uh, this of uh, this uh, organization so future integration integration with other departments right and which will bring less duplication of data because you are not supposed to keep data everywhere if you have an automated system, right? If your systems are connected. And if you want to have one more point, you can connect it with the cost side that there will be less papers leading to some cost efficiencies. Right? So this is the easier part. What can be the tricky part is the culture side. So that means out of seven, probably we got three to four marks, maybe three marks, right? Let's assume on a lower side that let's suppose examiner is not happy with one point. So at least we got three points, right? Now you're, I mean, you're, you should less panic with this question because you got three marks and you are just left with three points. Think in this way. Do you have, and at least you can recover, You at least you can have one or two points from this question. So let's suppose you are unable to completely attempt this question, but still you can make most out of it, at least five marks out of seven marks. So I think that will serve the purpose because uh, it's a difficult part because nothing is given in the question and you are getting most out of it. So you should be relaxed, you should be happy with that, right? So, uh, what can be done in terms of culture? Right. Try to identify at least one point. I just want to hear at least one point, one or two points from your side. Maybe it's wrong, maybe it's right, whatever it is. What sort of uh, change you will see in people, management, style of doing work, something, anything. Culture is a static, a staff will be resistant to change. Um, see, um, Brian, the issue is that we are supposed to identify what change it will bring, right? This is not a change. This is a problem. Like if someone asks you that, what can be the problems that company can face if company wants to introduce BPR? So I think in that case, this will be, we, we technically we start with this part because your point is completely valid. Mm. Okay, we can, okay, fine. Let's restructure this part that you guys are saying that the static is there, right? Resistant to change. Let's say there will be a culture of, uh, it will encourage
technologies or technology, right? So if we are unable, if we are not, if someone is not keen to innovate because this is a new system, we are going to integrate with the new systems. Maybe there will be ERP, maybe we will automate, maybe you know, there, will, there will be so many things which we will do in future. So in case someone is not interested in learning, that will create a problem for the company because in that case, company has to, you know, company can, won't be able to retain them. Right. So that means the this culture will, this culture will, uh, I mean, there will be an, uh, uh, you know, a sort of change, shift in culture that now the company is trying to, you know, not go for the typical style, but, you know, learn the new methods, ways of doing things, like in chat GPT, like in AI. What we are seeing now is that we have to accept the reality. Initially, universities and institutions were uh, reluctant to accept that reality, but now they are accepting that reality with some rules and regulations, right? So initially, there can be some resistance from the employees, but yes, we have to build a culture of innovation, of learning and progressing because people are not progressing, people are static there, right? So you can enhance this point definitely. Right? Uh, leadership style may have to change because uh, right now there is a bureaucratic system, right? Uh, and bureaucratic culture means that few people are responsible for uh, doing things. So, you know, there is quite rigid way of doing things, right? So that will be more because now we are uh, going for a system. Uh, we are going to give control to the other people because they are supposed to be carrying out certain things, right? Decision support system, something like that. So leadership style may change because uh, now... Uh, um, it will be, uh, I mean, critical thinking, uh, or you can say that, uh, employees maybe employees are supposed to take the decision based on certain reports, right? So you have to do it. Otherwise, if you keep it static, then again, uh, it will not create that impact, right? Uh, in that case, they have to learn because, see, this is basically, uh, the role of the distribution staff will change to doing drivers logging there might not like the new role. Uh, so that leave. So maybe the culture of uh, labor turnover will increase. Uh, like loyalty, labor, employee loyalty may suffer because of the reason which you have identified that uh, people are not happy with new system, right? Okay. And one more thing is there that leadership, it should, it, you can connect it with this part. Leaders have to own the new system and they have to take the responsibility to carry out all these things and, you know, deliver the same thing. Right? So at least we got three points, three to four points, right? Because uh, less bureaucratic environment will be there, layoffs will be there. And, you know, you have to, uh, and if you want to, uh, enhance this point, you can write it like you have to uh, communicate 
that who will suffer the one who is not willing to the ones who are not willing to continue to learn will suffer right so the way you are com communication you have to increase more communication with the employees because let them realize that what is actually the company is trying to do company is trying to progress and they have to learn because there will be new opportunities for the employees if they learn they will the company will keep them because they, these employees are their employees so you have to build a culture of uh you know uh communication uh giving them liberty uh let them realize their importance such sort of things have to you have to bring such things right so i believe if we can identify three points maybe four points from the culture side we can make at least five out of seven or maybe six out of seven right don't get depressed if you are not if you are still if you are even unable to get any point from the culture side because this is uh, this is the difficult part right uh, now i'm just trying to uh, let you guys see how examiner has identified the marking scheme now uh, yeah we missed one thing see uh, we missed one thing definition of vpr as we discussed in a previous part that uh, whenever the company is trying to introduce a new concept we have to start from the definition so we i forgot that so uh but it's good i forgot because uh, something which you forget you try to you remember that part right so bpr is described this is the basic definition of business process reengineering so if you are highlighting the basic definition of uh, a bpr so out of seven marks uh, out of seven marks, you can cover even one or two marks here. So the culture shock will be lesser in case you don't know what is what what you have to write in culture side, right? So culture side, one mark per point, maximum up to four points. Accounting system, one mark, maximum up to three marks. So how many marks are available for this part? Two marks for the definition, four marks for culture, and three marks for accounting system. So technically, we have nine points available. So let's suppose if we get two points from culture and we write the definition of BPR, which we forgot, I'm continuously repeating it because this will, you know, I, I mean, you may recall it whenever you see such things in your paper that this is a mistake which we did in our webinar. So we must not repeat that mistake. And how I have connected with it, uh, yesterday I've shown you the examiner copy, uh, the copy of a student where examiner highlighted the marks, right? So this is basically, I tried to do that thing. So point number nine is actually, uh, I hope you guys can see this. Point number nine is actually connected with this part. So definition of BPR, one point, maximum you can get two points. So if you write, if you write complete two paragraphs or three paragraphs or four paragraphs explaining BPR, you will still get two marks. Three to four marks for the discussion of culture. So I just highlighted the points that what, how many points I have written in culture, right? One, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three. I think 11 is related to accounting, yeah. So I've written one, two, three points for culture, right? And three points for accounting. So six marks for account from accounting side and probably two marks for the definition so probably i will get seven out of seven that's basically my process and since bpr is new that's why you have to write the definition of bpr right and let's proceed to the next part let's see what we can do in the next part okay so the next part is appraisal system now this is an interesting part because in this part uh, let's we will do it quickly because uh, we are getting short of time. The concern about the culture and change at all have led to long discussions about the human resource management, right? At the board, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, and let's do this. Okay. The concern about culture and change at all have led to long discussions about human resource management at the board meeting. Other director expressed worries about the appraisal system and a staff turnover which the ceo wants to address further 
the existing system of appraisal is for staff who have to and who have to have an annual meeting with their line manager to review their previous year's work discussing generally how to improve their efforts so this is basically the system that we have that the managers are supposed to review their work and in general they have to identify how they can improve right the result of this is an uh, is an action plan for employee development and a decision on the bonus to be paid which can be up to 2 percent of the basic salary just 2 percent of the basic salary over the years it has become common for these meetings to be informal and held over lunch and the company expense around 90 percent of the staff receive the full 2 percent of bonus right CEO wants the advice on following the usefulness of the current appraisal process at all and why staff turnover is a bad thing. Now, if you come to professional mark, so the CEO is actually raising a concern here that appraisal system and staff turnover system. So there is a concern. So here you can identify the marks of a skepticism because why the why the CEO is raising a concern? You have to make sure that whatever concern he is making, uh, what is the ground realities for that? Is there anything which you further would like to identify, further like to share, something like that? So I think this is an easier part. If you see the previous one, this is an easier part, right? So let's quickly go through this. Um, Okay, sorry. So how many marks were for this part? Appraisal system and this is for six marks, right? So six marks means what? If before writing, let's try to identify six marks means that um, probably three marks for this and probably three marks for this. Now, I have a question from all of you. Will you start this answer by writing the definition of appraisal that what is employee appraisal yes or no like we did in bpr we forgot to do in bpr can be yes or it can be no Okay, now try to think, is the company introducing an appraisal system or company is currently have, currently have an accounting, uh, company has an uh, appraisal system. Company is having already an appraisal system, right? Company is not introducing it, right? So if the company is not introducing it, you are not supposed to write the definition. This is the same question which yesterday a student asked, right? You are not supposed to write what the appraisal system is, right? And uh, why staff turnover is a bad thing? Because the staff turnover is something which they are already calculating. So this is not the introduction of staff turnover. So you may skip uh, this is staff turnover. What is the concept of staff turnover? So that's basically the first point from where I wanted to start, right? Uh, now, this part is easier because in this part, uh, the existing system of appraisal is, so we just need to identify two to three main areas and we know there are very, I mean, this part is quite easy because we have few things. What are the problems in the appraisal system? Uh, just one minute for you all to think. Okay, so the first and the most important point is that the company is uh, what reward system we discussed in the last uh, question in the, in the in yesterday was that reward system or whatever system you are making should be clear, should be enough to motivate the workers, right? So the first and the most important thing is that uh, the employees are a uh, line manager review their previous year's work and discuss generally how to improve their efforts, right? Now, 
what is the overall objective of the organization the objective of the organization is leadership right so sorry so whatever uh this one so whatever appraisal system is or whatever uh, you on whatever the grounds you are setting for employees to get their bonus should be connected with the cost leadership strategy right or something which is connected which is which will lead to cost leadership which will lead to maybe efficiencies cost efficiencies or something right because whatever you do should reflect whatever is in your mission statement or the strategy of the company so what do you mean by general term general improvement right so the question is asking you the usefulness whether this is useful or not right so let's start with the first point here that we are saying that it should be general right so general improvement should not be there if there are general improvement it's quite vague it's quite broad it's quite vague so it should be specific in or it should be specific in order to be uh, useful right the second thing is that it should be connected with the cost leadership strategy right and there is a doubt and in two and 90 percent get are getting the bonus so are the standards easy to achieve if they are uh it means that uh the system is not relevant because uh whatever the targets are should be challenging so you should bring you should keep them challenging in order to have a good uh, useful appraisal system useful process right and then managers are approving that so our managers so it seems that managers are you know involved and managers may get a proportion this thing company needs to check if the managers are getting some proportion of uh, bonus from employees that okay fine we will we will write a good marks in your statement uh, as your bonus is uh, you know get the bonus but we you are supposed to give us let's suppose 0.5% or maybe uh, 5% of whatever the total amount is right so that need to be checked and um, what else uh, the bonus is 2% right so if it's uh, too low generally managers say generally uh, companies don't bother to give that bonus because this is insignificant amount but generally it is given so that is not good idea because if you if everyone is getting the bonus it's just a part of your salary it is not going to motivate will not motivate the labor right so it's an easier part right and the next part is why staff turnover is a bad thing. Now, this is interesting. Why staff turnover is a bad thing? We know that whenever employee leave, uh, there is a there can be some training cost, there can be some learning curve effect because of the inefficiencies, right? And it can be recruitment cost. Right. So this is some, these are the costs. But do you really think that? Employee turn staff turnover is a bad thing for company. What the problem company is facing? The company is facing a problem that the employees are not leaving the organization and that's why the culture is quite static. They are not ready to innovate because everyone is living their same life uh, from past 10 years or maybe 12 years. No one is bringing, no one is willing to bring the change, right? So these are the costs sorry where we go these are the costs which are associated but now we have to connect it with the scenario and the scenario says that for troll company uh uh this low labor turnover just uh forgive forget about the spelling i'm just writing it 
So labor turnover is resulting in Mm. let's write the same word static environment so if company wants to you know uh, keep their current employee but they want to you know have the culture they need to train them or you know something if you want to write it you mean right otherwise it's not that much required okay so let's move to the marking scheme Marking scheme says that uh, description of the purpose of appraisal, one mark. Uh, evaluation of current appraisal process, one mark. Staff turnover is one mark up to three marks, right? So appraisal, we are not defining the appraisal, but we are just telling the CEO why appraisal can be important. Right? So this is basically now. The important point here is that staff turnover, staff turnover is, uh, is a, is a bad thing. That is what they ask, right? But you have to balance the answer here that that for troll companies, it's high, low staff turnover is actually creating a problem. Okay, and if you see the marking scheme, professional marking scheme, professional marks are available for recognition of limitations. Of course, in, oh, sorry, skepticism is related to appraisal and staff turnover. Commercial acumen is related to cost-benefit analysis. So you have to identify whether the system is practical in terms of in terms of BPR. I'm not sure I'm, why I'm continuously saying benchmarking instead of BPR. So bench uh, BPR is relevant or not. So you have to give some practical reasoning. So that's what we did in the cost side. Right now. Uh, let me take you to the examiner uh, examples that uh, what are the examiner's examples. Now, this is not related to this question uh, because we discussed marking a scheme of this question. So I thought that I should show you what are the common mistakes, what are the mistakes which examiner highlighted in other question that how to write your answer. Uh, I think we had a discussion last time that you have to write complete sentences, right? You don't have to assume that examiner knows any, everything, right? So let me try to explain you this part. This is this is something which I got from examiner report, right? For example, some responses indicated that return on capital employed and dividends are not good measures of shareholder value. Comments like this will gain little merit as candidates need to make clear why those matrices are not appropriate. As I said earlier that this answer is perfectly right. There is nothing wrong with this answer, but you will not get marks because you are not justifying the answer. So uh, how to write your answer is write complete context that uh, okay, sorry, I just jumped to another question. Um, this is because um, just to tell you guys how you are not supposed to write the answer, right? So we will discuss more about professional marks in tomorrow's session. Return on capital employed is an accounting-based measure of performance and as such is likely to have low correlation with the shareholder value. Dividend payments do not represent payments to share, do represent payment to shareholder, but shareholder value also includes share price appreciation, and that is not being measured by sharing. Right. So this is a complete answer that why ROCE and dividends are not good measures. Because ROCE is an accounting measure, it has no correlation with the share price or maybe shareholders' value. And dividend represents at how much money you are paying to the shareholder. So both are not connected with uh, share price appreciation. And that's why uh, we believe that this is not a relevant indicator, right? So both answers are correct, but the first one will get quite less marks because this is uh, just the conclusion. And a student just let examiner to guess why ROC and dividends are not relevant. He has written that these are not relevant. 
So he is right, but justification is not there. He will not get marks, right? Okay. Now there is another info, another type of answer which students generally write. The report is lacking in external information in key areas. Right. The answer is perfectly fine. There is no wrong with this answer because whenever you are writing a report to the CEO, you have to compare the uh, the uh, results with the external. Uh, what the other companies are doing, industry averages. So in this case, an industry average is given in Shrain report in two areas. Okay, fine. Uh, how you are supposed to write? One of Shrain's objective is to grow sales through charging a premium price. It would be helpful to have some indication of the average prices charged by Sharon rivals compared to the average prices charged by Sharon for a comparable products or comparable products to enable a judgment on premium pricing to be made. So we have identified why we are saying that, look, you have to make a comparison with someone outside the organization, someone who with whom you are competing, right? So in this paragraph, we told the CEO that why we are recommending you to have uh, a comparison with uh, the external or, or to, with some other companies. And in this case, we are just telling that, look, your report is not having external information. CEO will definitely ask why this is, how important, how relevant is this uh, point? And then you will explain him that, look, this is the relevancy. So you have to tell the relevancy at the first point. Right. And this is the second thing which I just wanted to discuss with you, maybe two points. Uh, we'll discuss this one point here. Okay, so marketing spend is not a measure of value, so the barrack should not use this measure. This is again from uh, an answer from some, some student. Maybe you are among one of those who write such answers. So... Just telling that marketing is spend, spend is not a good measure. Why you think that marketing is spend is not a good measure? Tell me the reason why. That why part is missing in this answer. So measuring, so this is the way you can write. Marketing, uh, measuring marketing is spent alone would not indicate, will not give, no, will not give, sorry, will give no indication of the return on that spend and hence, would give us no indication as whether that spend had created or destroyed the value. Like whatever we are spending, whether it is generating any sales or not. If the company was able to measure this spend alongside any enhancements in revenue, it could be viewed that one activity had an effect on the another and measure could be seen more as return on an exposure rather than an expense. The company is already measuring marketing contribution to revenue. It would seem that this relationship between the spend and return on that spend is already being measured. To also measure marketing spend on its own, therefore, it is best. Uh, so, therefore, is at best unhelpful for Barrick and could potentially be damaging if Barrick has a marketing manager who seeks to increase their budget on an annual incremental basis. Barik should therefore uh, desist with the measure of marketing spend. So now there is a complete picture that why they are saying that marketing spend is not a measure uh, of value. Because marketing expenditure, it alone will not tell you the whole picture. It has to be connected with the revenue. That how much revenue you, this marketing expenditure is supposed to bring in the company. Maybe definitely, of course, you are students, you cannot write in as much detail as written here. But at least you should try to explain the reason why you think that this is spend is not a good measure. Why you think that this is not a good indicator. Why you think that this is a good indicator. Both. This is not a good indicator. You have to tell the reason. If, the, if you are saying that this is a good indicator, you also have to tell the reason. So please don't do this mistake. And that's why I, I continuously asking students to write their answer. Because when you write the answer and you ask your tutor to check that answer and you get the feedback, you can have the idea where you actually went wrong. Right. Uh, like this last example. 
uh, the difference uh, with zero based budgeting, the difference with zero based budgeting is that it's a start from zero. This will help Velvet as its aim of controlling cost as there will be no budgetary slack carry forward. The point about budgetary slack is not being carried forward is true and is worthwhile point to make out, but no clear indication is given as to what specifically ZBP does that is both different to the current approach. So the examiner then said that, look, you have to completely explain this, your point. So if you are writing a point, try to write the complete picture, right? Try to write it with reasoning. Don't write things without reasoning because without reasoning will not result in marks, will not give you marks, right? So that's basically how you can see. In today's session, we covered three things which I believe is important. The first thing is that if you, if examiner is asking you to, then to perform some calculations, Try to develop a habit of concluding the calculation or maybe if you think that there is need to make some assumptions, try to write it. If you are concluding, if, if you know, write, if you want to write some other benefits which you think are relevant to the discussion, other points, but it's not given there, you may write it. Subject to the, to the marks, how many marks are available. The second point which we discussed was related to the culture point because that was seven mark question and apparently we were not getting any idea about culture. So let's forget about it. Out of seven marks, just see how much you can get right from the other part. So the balance amount will be wrote regarding the culture. The third thing which we identified is that whenever you are introducing something, you have to write, start with its basic definition. It will give you one or two marks. The third thing, which we, the fourth thing which we discussed here, which should be the takeaway of today's session, is that don't write your answer in one uh, sentence, just concluding what you are saying. You have to explain your conclusion, your reason for conclusion, that why you think that this is not a good, good indicator. Yes, it's a conclusion, basically. And why you think that this can be uh, an indicator, right? And I showed you three examples that why examiner, what examiner is thinking regarding the answers which it is getting, which he or she is getting from the students. That right? these are three, uh, these are three extracts from three different questions. And in all questions, you can see the same mistakes which are done by the student. Students are writing one liner, the first part. Uh, students are lining one liner. Students are lining, writing one liner, and students are writing one liner answer. Three different questions, three different attempts, three different topics, same problem. And that's why I continuously say that examiner is frustrated with this. That is, students are not justifying, students are not connecting with the scenario, students are not connecting with the mission statement, students are not justifying their answers, students are not writing properly. So if you know the things and if you're not doing such, if you're doing these mistakes in the paper, the chances of you to pass the paper will be quite good. Oh, that's why I started with, uh, with this question because I, had an idea that it will take time because I just want to dissect the whole question, right? Just five minutes left. So definitely we won't be able to uh, start with uh, the recap part. Uh, but let's see if we can do something more. Let's see. Any comment from your side? You guys are most welcome to comment. Uh, initially, you guys asked regarding the slides. So slides I will share in the group uh, by at the end of third, uh, by the end of three days lecture, three days webinar. Anything else would you like to discuss? Just let me know. Any question, any issues, any feedback, anything?
मंडे प्रोबेबली बिकॉज नेक्स्ट वीक विल बी टू लेट सो मंडे वी कैन हैव अ सेशन विद सेम टाइम the student is saying there is a student who is saying that uh, we can continue uh, with uh, concentrate concentrating on how to attempt the paper uh, tomorrow also and then we can have one uh, session for recap so what the other students are thinking just let me know see the timing issue is okay anything else uh okay just a quick uh feedback from you all uh shall we uh do the complete question number 1 tomorrow and the other option is that i can make a video of uh, a recap of recapping all the question and i can upload it uh, on the kkdl platform so that you guys can uh, watch it as per your convenience is that possible because monday see monday is the working day so if i because there are there are one or two students from i think zimbabwe or somewhere uh, where the time gap is like 3 hours so if i keep a class at 7 or 8 uh, it will fall during their working hours so that's a problem basically so the one solution is that i can record those session i can record a week can continue with question number 1 tomorrow and i will record the recap part and then i will share the recordings with you is that possible i will share it on my youtube channel and on kkdl platform channel and with all of you if anyone is not completed yet yes please for what for recording and uh, concentrating on question number 1 tomorrow okay okay so yes we can do it so let's uh keep question number 1 for tomorrow we will do one question uh, tomorrow and then we will do i will share the recording of uh, you know summarizing the whole kpm day okay okay thank you for taking out your time uh, so see you tomorrow same time take care bye bye